Hey guys, this is Mark Vallalunga. You're watching Gear Masters, and I'm going to take you through my gear today. I'm going to take you through some of these guitars. Uh, this is probably my favorite one. Um, I'm an Aristides artist, so I have several of these guys. Um, they've been awesome to put a, a, a logo right here for, for nothing more, which is pretty sweet. And you can also see a couple of these on uh, the lace pickups here, the lace sensors. Um, the cool thing about these guitars is that there, there's no wood in the guitar at all. So even even the fretboard you see, it's all rich light, which is uh, an epoxy based substance. And even these guitars themselves are uh, science projects for sure. They're all carbon fiber, fiberglass, and then after they make the mold, they inject this um, element called arium into the guitar which has really good acoustic properties it's like kind of like a little glass bubbles which is yeah it's a science project for sure but uh, I also have an Evertune bridge on here which is awesome this guitar is in drop B um, it's it's super nice having this and day in day out it's just it doesn't matter what the weather is it's just golden all strings actually we're, we're Ernie Ball guys um, I use uh, 12 to 54. I love the Wound G. Honestly, it's uh, I really hate playing <laughs> any any electric guitars with a uh, one that's not wound. It feels like fishing wire for whatever reason, especially that string. I love the Five Way Selector. Honestly, I'm I'm really big on splitting the pickup just in position two, um, especially for a lot of songs on on the, the stories we tell ourselves on this record. You get kind of more of a stringy tone. Which is which is a lot of fun, and I think can give a lot of room for the bass to cover. So these guitars are really well balanced. Um, you know, there's there's nothing wrong with, you know, like I, I have my Strat over here, which is all you know the traditional um, wood and everything. But kind of in the touring business, it's nice when you know it's it's literally negative 11 out, and like yesterday, and this thing's still golden. It's, it's still perfectly in tune, the neck isn't warped, it's not bowed or anything, and it's, it's, it's for the long term. They use all top-of-the-line products, is, you know, from everything from the tuning pegs, all the, the graphite, using the graphite nut here and even in the saddles. And they really take good care of me. They're a small base company in uh, the Netherlands. Um, they've been growing and doing awesome, and uh, I'm really proud to be partnered with them. This is my Strat. Uh, my American Strat, and uh, I I love this guy so much. It's one of my first guitars. My dad bought it for me. I uh, I just put a fiberglass pickup on here, or the uh, pick guard. Yeah, yeah, the pick, the pick guard. I couldn't think of the word. Um, and, and actually, when putting it on, it cracked in several different places. But I thought it actually kind of looked cool. Um, I had to put a dime in there because I literally don't even know what that hole's for and uh, the dime fit perfectly. Well, I, I use it on uh, Ballast, the song Ballast, This Is The Time, and uh, Don't Stop. I end up tuning the low string down to A and everything else is a whole step down. Um, so it's great. As far as pickups, I have a couple Seymour Duncans in here and uh, a blues guy in the middle that's pretty awesome. The thing I love about Strats is they're so versatile. They can really, they, they have such a unique tone and they can still, you know, you can still go metal with them if you, if you need to if, or if you want to. Probably use this one most of the night. It's, uh, most of our songs are in drop C. So this is in drop C, um, as you see. And uh, yeah, it's their 060 model. I actually have, uh, I've been using this uh, custom strap here made by Orion. Um, Mir, a good friend of ours or whatever, owns the company and uh, even put little logos on here that are awesome. This is really good quality leather. When you sweat a bunch on stage, it uh, it helps for it to not deteriorate right away and get, and get super stinky. <laughs> yeah, you can see these picks were in tune uh, GP picks. Um, Yay! And got a little, little signature on there. Made it work. And this is uh, another Aristides. As you see, it's also an 060 model. Um, I have this guy in drop B flat. Once again, it's I never have any issues with the Evertune bridge. Um, it's it's really really nice for low tunings. It doesn't get muddy or warbly or you know, and, and all the chords. It's, you know, every, every note is exactly in the frequency you need it to be in and can, easy to fine tune everything. It has the the Seymour Duncan's you see here. 
as well. Actually, these these more came stock, um, and I, I needed something last minute. And I've been it, with Axe Effects and everything that we use. You, there's so many things to tweak, and I honestly like having a lot of different options because it really just makes for a lot of you able to do a lot more things. Honestly, the O two O model, the Aristides. This one actually has a the rosewood fretboard um, that you can see. So there is wood in this guitar. Um, I honestly, I, I love the sound of this because it, it does get a little, there's there's like a little more low end in it than the 060. I don't feel it stays in tune as well. It's still awesome. I love the kind of Gibson sort of SG double cutaway uh, type of look. The gloss on here is cool. I call this one bowling ball. It probably dumbs down the, <laughs> the look of it or whatever as far as the name goes, but I, I, I love it. I have the lace pickups in here. And uh, this, this one's mainly my backup um, for all drop C stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely a big fan. This is an extremely yeah, custom guitar. Um, uh, one of my students actually gave me this. There's a, a long story to it. My son's name is Phoenix, hence the, the Phoenix that you see here. And it, it was kept a surprise for me that uh, my student actually got my wife and my son to put their sort of thumbprints into the clear coat that you can kind of see in the Phoenix right here. And it'll make a lot more sense when you see this. That's actually, yeah, there's my son's handprint, my wife's handprint. And these are our lyrics to the song Fade In, Fade Out, which is about my son and my dad. And there's my last name right here on the neck, <laughs> which is wild. Um, and it, it's all in like Air Force stencil. Uh, my, my dad was in the Air Force, so it's, it ties him into the piece as well. Um, it's, it's really a true, a true work of art. Um, and I, I just, I love having the big, big body Gibson, honestly. And, and this is actually with a wood that was uh, illegal and seized. <laughs> I was seriously speechless when, when this, uh, when it was given to me. Uh, I, I was very hesitant to bring this on the road at all just because this is it's almost more like a really nice sports car it's like you just leave in your garage and it just collects dust or whatever and, and I debated you know kind of doing that same thing but I feel like I have to play this guitar on, on Fade In Fade Out and it uh, like I love the tone that it produces it's so classic and uh, it, yeah, I do need a, a specific car, uh, guitar in the tuning because it's an odd tuning. It's it's sort of drop B. It's it's B F sharp B, and then right here it's E B E. And honestly, it's just more for this specific open tuning that you kind of hear just because the song is in is in the fifth fret key or is in E minor basically. But how I play it is just kind of open there and using a lot of the open string resonance and everything it caters to the song and you can also see a lot of these uh, silly pictures I have in here you know it uh, helps keep keep what we do very serious it's all no jokes here nothing more completely no no jokes so <laughs> and this guy we haven't been playing uh, this one on the on the tour or whatever I'm still uh, I'm a yeah Gibson's great for acoustics um, of course and they've been fortunate enough to, to pair with us and, and give us some good gear um, for a lot of the times when we do do more radio visits or if we are playing like songs like Just Say When or different acoustic renditions of the songs live, um, which is fun, but we aren't doing it on this tour or haven't been. But uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of this guy. As you see, uh, we, we uh, prefer the wireless because uh, it's nice. We, we do, I do lots of twirls and things and to prevent uh, knots happening from cables and cables shorting out or whatever. Wirelesses are great. Shore's been awesome. I've used a bunch of different wirelesses before. There's zero tone loss um, and they work 99% of the time. <laughs> We're Axe guys of so Fractal Audio. Um, this is their uh, the MFC 101, the Mark III. Uh, I don't need all the aspects of it, but I try to use most everything. It's, it's really crazy just how how uh, custom you can get on things just 
by changing every single number and what every single number does. So basically like scenes are presets within presets, so typically I'll use all first eight buttons or whatever for different parts of each song. And then even after that, as you keep going up to each number, um, I specifically don't have anything for a lot of these numbers, but then you can scroll over and you can customize which CC value, MIDI talk, get all geeky. Um, for instance, I'll use a couple of these for pitch, pitch dives, basically up or down, or um, you know, do, doing the tap tempo, doing the tuner. Uh, got the emission expression pedal here in case wireless goes down, which pretty much never happens. Um, I'll end up having uh, just a hard line, just yeah, in case. So, which is nice to have because you never know, yeah. shit happens. For long strands of cable, obviously XLR is always better. So, radial makes great. Um, this this little box here that basically makes a quarter inch turn into an XLR to give you the length that it needs. Is uh, you know, if it was all quarter inch, you'd lose uh, a lot of tone. Yeah. Audio Technica makes some killer mics and with getting back to us whenever we need with anything we need really um, and that's you know my mic dance mic Johnny's mic um, he's using their wireless stuff big fans and big supporters happy to have their stuff after this tour and the European tour we have coming up we're gonna switch and upgrade to the next model the XFX3 right now we're still rocking the uh, XFX2 XLs as you see here's me Dan and then we have a backup guy down here um, it's it's been great, actually, the whole last record, the stories we tell ourselves, everything we did was all Axe Effects. I'm super happy with the Axe Effects and just all the all their effects and everything you can do. And like tunnels, I end up having three presets because I just, I run so much crap. <laughs> um, but, but it's nice, you can kind of see just the signal flow and some things going on. Um, Dan's get a little even crazier. Yeah, so, as you can see, this, this signal path is, is, is wacky, it's a little dirty. I don't know why this is here, or this is here. But uh, yeah, lo lots of stuff going on. There's there's so much capability that you can do with assigning certain buttons to do different features on your pedal board. So, for instance, for a lot of this record, um, and with the Axe Effects stuff, um, I'll be using, uh, I, got, I end up modeling a Saldano amp. I'm, I'm a big, e even when we, we did on the self-titled record, we ended up miking, uh, you know, using an amp head and a cab, and I've always kept going back to the Saldano. It's just the clarity is so awesome with it. So Axfex does a great job at modeling this amp, and uh, I pretty much use it on just about every single song. Um, obviously, certain songs that you know might get away from it, or if I want more of a Class A sounding amp. But yeah, as you can see, and this is a lot of the times my setup, I'll. Because we are a one guitar band, I end up going stereo by basically having two different cabs right here, and then on one of the cabs, I'll just pitch off like a scent or whatever to give it that chorus sound, and then I'll pan it, um, which you can see yeah, right here. I'll pan it all the way, all the way to the right, and that's this side's all the way to the right, this side's all the way to the left, and uh, there's different ways of going stereo, but that's worked really well for us into giving it a wider sound so the front of house our, our sound guy can use that and, and have a, a wider sound in general. Thanks so much for uh, yeah doing the gear rundown with uh, me and uh, nothing more and we'll be working on a new record here toward the end of the year. Um, it takes us forever to do anything so it may be a while but I'm excited about it and uh, it's gonna be cool. <laughs>